Hello everybody, this is uh, General Yanis, and today in Death Car Tactics I'm going to be reviewing the relics and the warlord traits uh, together um, from the Death Card Codex and uh, also now that the champions also can get the uh, relics with a stratagem and uh, I would imagine that uh, Taliman uh, has some scrolls with all this uh, information somewhere so let's, uh, let's have a look at the information so uh, today the 28th uh, of, um, of February, the last day of the month, and uh, I have been uh, a little bit working on on my on my collection, uh, and I'm trying a new color scheme for my bases uh, using Martian Iron Earth uh, to make the models pop out a bit more. And I kind of like the look that uh, there is a contrast from the base uh, orange to the the green, let's say the Death Card green um, Marines. And here, we previously, I was using sort of a yellowish type of uh, of of base, and it it didn't. Yeah, it, did, it didn't uh, work as well, I think. But, uh, I, and you can see here my computer, uh, that's uh, probably running some, some macros in the background. But <laughs> in this video, I'm reviewing the relics and the warlord traits, uh, attempting to give a summary and a rating uh, of them. Uh, and uh, we will be looking at how to take uh, relics and traits, and then um, looking at the relics, the, the ones that we can use in general, and the ones that are play company specific. Then I will uh, have a summary in the rating of the relics, and then we will look at the the warlord traits, the the general um, traits, and the plague company warlord traits that are actually contagions, and giving also a summary and rating of the traits, and then some final summary and some final thoughts. So let's uh, take a look. So uh, taking relics and warlord traits, how does it work? So basically when we prepare our army list, um, after appointing one of our characters as a warlord, uh, they can take a relic and a warlord trait uh, for this warlord for free. And uh, of course, uh, named characters cannot get relics. And then name, named characters have predefined warlord traits. So we, if, we, if we take a named character and we make him our warlord then we cannot add the free relic on him and then we cannot uh, decide ourselves what warlord trade they should have it says on their data sheet what it should be uh, if mortarion is on in our, our list then he must be our warlord it's his new uh, the new rule he has so we cannot select another warlord uh, each trait and each relic can only be used once in our army and each unit can maximum have one trait and maximum one relic except Mortarion that comes uh, with uh, a full uh, four traits, uh, four warlord traits. Um, there are play company specific uh, traits and relics that can only be used if the unit is from, from this specific play company. Uh, and then uh, importantly to make the list and customize our armies on top of the free relic and trait for our warlord, we can then use uh, requisition stratagems before the battle to give uh, more eligible units or characters, let's say, additional traits and additional relics for extra command points. So we have the stratagem Plague chosen for one command point uh, that allows us to give a Warlord trait to a character uh, on top of the free Warlord trait we gave to our Warlord. Uh, and uh, we can use this, and th this can be used before the battle a certain number of time maximum, depending on the size of the battle we are playing. So if we are playing below 1000 points, we can use it one time for a strike force battle to 2000 points. Typically, we can use it two times, and for large battles more than 2000 points, we can use the, this stratagem three times. The Gifts of Decay for one command point. Uh, is can be used to give a relic to a character on top of the relic we could give to our warlord for free and this can also be used one two or three times depending on the size of the battle and now uh, we have gotten a new um, a new uh, stratagem the champion of disease for one command point and this allows us to give a relic to a bubonic astartes champion and not a not a character as as the others uh, were require, required and there is a list of four eligible relics they can get they cannot get any relic but there are four that can be given even to our champions and bubonic astartes champions that's basically our our plague marines our black lord terminators and the death shroud uh, that have champions in their in their squads and again we can use this one two three times uh, depending on the on the on the size of the battle so in a 2000 points battle uh, without Mortarion, um, we could thus have uh, three, three Warlord traits 
one for our, our warlord and then two uh, two uh, with a, with a plague chosen we can give three relics on characters so one the free and two for these gifts of decay and we could also give on top of these two relics on champions so basically we would be using six command points the maximum number to fill our, our army list to the brim with relics and traits. I'm not saying that this is something we should do or, or it's, it's good to do, but I'm just saying that now we have a possibility to, to um, put a lot of traits and relics to characters and champions and our warlords uh, by, by using these uh, requisition stratagems. So let's start uh, reviewing our relics and let's start with the general relics then that, that, that uh, are not Plague Company specific. Uh, we have, the, first of all, the Fugaris Helm. This adds 3 inch to the range of characters' auras that they already have uh, and max, um, max 12 inches to this range. And this, uh, this is important that it's aura and it's not affecting actually contagions. So you cannot use a Fugaris Helm to increase the contagion um, range. So we have to keep in mind that aura and contagion are not the same for, the, for this uh, for, for is a contagion is not considered an aura. So this could be quite interesting for something like a plague surgeon or some other auras that, that could be could be useful. And then we have the tollkeeper relic that can be given to a tallyman, not any other, uh, let's say, type of unit. And uh, the, the tollkeeper does that, has the ability that the plague company um, a core unit within six inches, the ranged attacks um, uh, then unmodified sixes to hit score additional one hit so we get exploding sixes for for shooting so this is a really great um, relic for um, for the for any good shooty unit and, and imagine for example the contemptors with volkites or uh, plasma guns or he high heavy heat multi melt or, or whatever but they have to be core and um, that that they would be they would be on sixes to hit we would have more uh, wound rolls and then we have the revolting stench vats for a foul blight spawn spawn model only and this gives uh, the revolting stench aura and this is really great aura so enemy units within six inches of the foul blight spawn with this relic uh, then uh, the enemy unit uh, cannot use any rules that allow it to fight first and never counts as having made a charge this turn irrespective of any other rules he might have so this uh, prevents enemies uh, from charging your units and fighting first then it allows our units to fight first killing a lot of the enemy maybe off and then taking much less casualties so probably a must-have relic if you want to use the flood foul blight spawn as an anti-melee and a very useful uh, relic and then we have the demons uh, toll um that this goes only for noxious blight bringer this is once per battle in the opponent's movement phase you can select one enemy unit within six inches on a two plus this unit cannot fall back so this is a bit much different from the previous demon toll which was giving us invalid saves unfortunately this one is only very situational you can use it only once per battle to prevent an enemy falling back so it's at least in my opinion not a very super um, useful uh, stratagem and also the noxious blight bringer is not as useful as some other of the other variants then we have the putri drepi art the play caster uh, can be used on a play caster or sorcerer model then these models that have this relic know one more psychic power which is quite good uh, and once per battle they can heal d3 lost wounds after successfully casting a spell but unfortunately now this is not applicable to the demon prince the demon prince would benefit a lot from this because he only knows one psychic power and he would be as a melee uh, type oriented character he would be good to be able to heal some lost wounds but unfortunately it's only applicable to a playcaster thus maybe not as as uh, as useful as if it if was able to give it to the demon prince if we continue uh, with the relics and uh, now uh, we are coming to the four relics that also can be applied to bubonic astartes champions so first we have the the very interesting weapon the reaper of the glorious entropy this can replace a man reaper or plague reaper uh, and it can replace the the weapon with a reaper of glorious entropy which is a a, a double strength ap minus three damage three weapon so basically it will be a strength eight for either the lord of contagion or death shroud terminator that can that can have it uh, it's a plague weapon 
it doesn't come with a minus one to hit and then it's an unmodified uh, it also has that unmodified wound roll of sixes give plus one mortal wound additional to the target so the no minus one to hit is really good and this is an excellent weapon for lord of contagion and and or death Shroud champion the plague skull of glotilla is a once per battle at the end of movement phase uh, you select an enemy unit within six inches you roll seven dice on a four or fives you deal one mortal wound to this enemy unit and on a six you deal uh, six is you deal the three mortal wounds so it should give you 4.7 wounds uh, mortal wounds on average but it's only once per battle and yeah if you don't have anything else <laughs> you could give it for example also to a, for example, a plague marine champion and then unexpectedly maybe he can he can throw this as a, as a as the end of the movement phase this could be quite useful also if you want to target a katan um, a knight shard uh, giving some mortal wounds on him in in the movement phase uh, because he can only take three wounds per phase so that that could be a specific use against necrons the separating plate a very uh, a very popular relic in the eighth edition and beginning of ninth now has been quite changed so the bearer gets a two plus armor save uh, and if an enemy unit makes the bearer lose wounds in the fight phase you roll a d6 on a two plus the enemy receives a mortal wound um, so this is a big nerf on the mortal wounds previously if we saved if we saved uh, the, the the damage we could we could let's say kind of throw back the 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 mortal wound but now only if it bypasses us with the two plus and so on we can maybe give one mortal wound to an enemy unit so the it may be the, now it's only slightly relevant for giving for example the demon prince a two plus armor save because our other lords uh, they have a two plus armor save already and this extra mortal wound is not really beneficial to to spend command points uh, getting a relic in my opinion and then we have the plague bringer weapon and this is uh, for a model with pale sword demonic blade plague knife or power sword can replace to the plague bringer weapon which is a melee a strength plus two ap minus three and damage two weapon and all the weapons it can replace are only damage one weapon so of course this is this is better a better weapon let's say and it's a plague weapon and each additionally each time a model is destroyed by this weapon the model count uh, as two for moral test purposes so if we have a chaos lord or something uh, with his plague bringer or even uh, yeah some of the champions could could use it if they kill a couple of enemies then it could really put the put the enemy in a problem to to pass the morale test unless they use some command points best value to use on a chaos lord replacing the power sword uh, less useful on the champions because they have less attacks and less weapon skills so the plague bringer on the chaos lord he would be getting five attacks with a two plus uh, uh to hit so these four relics are the ones that can be applied to bubonic astartes champions now uh, continuing with the relics that are plague company specific so in order to give these relics the the character or uh, that that is getting them must be from this selected plague company be part of this detachment the harbingers have the infected remains and once per battle at the end of the movement um, the character can can select an objective market within three inches and while the bearer is on the battlefield this objective marker will have the contagions of nurgle ability with all the contagions the bearer has so it will be giving a minus one toughness from the objective unfortunately it can only be used once per battle and unfortunately uh, for harbingers normally we would like to bring typhus probably if we want to run a harbingers um, um, let's say uh, detachment and uh, typhus cannot take the relic so it should be some other character taking this relic the inexorable are the leech poor casket every time the bearer kills an enemy enemy model uh, select an inexorable vehicle within 18 inches and the vehicle gains uh, one lost wound and uh, max three wounds per turn can be regained um, this this way Mortarion's anvil have the very interesting warp insect hive and the bearer can uh, in melee can re-roll the hit roll and the wound roll so in, this is incredibly strong for our best melee characters for example the lord of contagion and demon prince 
they will be hitting on two pluses, re-rolling, and they will be wounding on two or three pluses or whatever and re-roll the whole thing. Also, it would be nice if we are facing, uh, for example, Space Marines with transhuman uh, physiology, only be able to wound in on fours, we would be able to re-roll all our wound rolls here. In the, the Wretched, uh, they can take the Demon's Favor Relic for, the, for a Plague Caster, a Malignant Plague Caster only. Uh, so this replaces the Pestilential Fallout ability. So it's a, a successful psychic test of 7+, plus gives D3 mortal wounds to the closest enemy. Uh, and the Pestilential Fallout only gives one mortal wound, so it's a bit more mortal wounds. And the successful psychic test with less than 7 gives one mortal wound for an enemy within 6 inches. The Poxmongers have the Iron Cloth Furnace, which was a very popular relic, but now quite uh, nerfed, let's say. So in the on command phase, uh, select one Poxmonger's Demon Engine within six inches of the Iron Cloth Furnace Bearer. And until the next command phase, um, the Demon Engine uh, unit gets four plus Inval save. So previously it was an aura affecting multiple units. Now it, you only select one unit. In the Ferryman, have the Ferryman Scythe. Uh, and this can be uh, replacing all a Man Reaper. Uh, so basically it's only for Lord of Contagion. Um, so this is a, the, the weapon is like a Man Reaper. It has the cleave profile and the scythe profile. The only difference is that the scythe profile is better than the Man Reaper. It has three times the hit rolls per attack and the other one has two times, but the cleave profile is unchanged. And then finally, Mortarion's Chosen son, Sons, they have the Vomitrix Relics. And this is for the Foul Blight Spawn, uh, the Plague Sprayer re replacement. And the Plague Sprayer is a D6 variable weapon. And the Vomitrix um, has the same uh, profile, Strength 7, AP-3, Damage 2. It's a Plague Weapon auto-hitting, but it has 7 shots guaranteed. So you get twice the damage from, uh, on average from compared to a D6 weapon. So Vomitrix can be quite interesting if if we have a foul blood spawn from the Mortarion's chosen sons. So, uh, so this now leads us to the summary of the relics. And here I make I have made this table with a summary of all the relics. Um, you can see the relic name, which unit it's applicable to, uh, the description, short description here, and the, where I think are the best uses. And I've tried also to give them a grade or a rating here. And I will just uh, go through a few of them here. Uh, I think for me, the uh, a, a few of them really stand out. The Tollkeeper Relic for the Taliman is, is really helpful, especially also because the Taliman is quite helpful in giving us command points. So if we are taking the Taliman anyway, we, would, we should consider adding the Tollkeeper. And the best use is that Taliman together with uh, core units that are sh very good at range shooting, like Contemptors or Hellbrutes or a shooty squad of Marines, uh, then it can boost the range damage, range damage by 25% for these, uh, co any core units that are within six inches of, of him. And for example, an example would be a Contemptor with Queen Volkites will be doing six wounds on average, actual wounds on the on the targets I usually uh, calculate, uh, but now uh, with the Tollkeeper Relic close by, it would be doing 7.6 wounds on average. Uh, 10 Plague Marines uh, with two Blight Launchers and three Plasmas will be making nine wounds on average on the same targets, and they would be up to 11 wounds uh, on this, um, on, across the, the targets. So 25% more damage for our shooting uh, weapons. Also the Hellbrood can benefit as well. Uh, as, as long as it's core, it can benefit from, from this range damage boost. The revolting stance vats for the foul blight spawn. Um, this is the best uses that foul blight spawn escorts melee units like plague marines, death shroud, chaos spawns, uh, etc. Um, and, and because they can fight first, they can do a lot of damage. And even if they get charged, we, we have the chance to fight and kill those maybe pesky terminators uh, or whatever is coming at us we would be able to to have a swing at them first before they can they can do their damage in melee so for example uh, a unit of 10 melee oriented plague marines with flails cleavers and all of them having melee weapons could do uh, 17 wounds on space marine terminators if they fight first 
if the Terminators and maybe wipe off a whole squad, basically. But if the Terminators would go first, they could take out, let's say, four or five Plague Marines. And then suddenly we lost a lot, a lot of units. And then we are not as efficient in going back. So striking first can make a huge difference in the game. So I think this is really, if you're planning on going melee heavy, I think this should be an auto-include, the Foul Blight Spawn with the Revolting Stench Rats. The Reaper of Glorious Entropy weapon uh, for max damage output. Um, we, If we want to maximize the damage output, we can give the Lord of Contagion the, the Warp Insect Hive instead, and then give the Death Shroud uh, Champion the Reaper of the Glorious Entropy. Uh, so um, the Lord of Contagion with the Plague Reaper would be doing five wounds actual damage on average across all the targets. It would go up to seven wounds uh, with, the, with the Entropy the Glorious Entropy Reaper and the, uh, a, death a Death Shroud Champion with a Man Reaper will be doing 4.3 wounds up to 7.2 wounds, the same damage because he also has the same number of attacks and same weapon skill uh, across across the target. So quite uh, good, very good to, to make um, either the Death Shroud Champion or the Lord of Contagion a real uh, true beat stick uh, in combat. And the Warp Insect Hive, as I mentioned, from Mortarion's Anvil, um, which allows us to reroll heat rolls and wood rolls. The best use is on a Demon Prince with a Hellforged Sword or a Lord of Contagion with a Plague Reaper, uh, also including, for example, the Pathogen. Uh, the Demon Prince uh, with a Hellforged Sword should be able to, the base damage is 7.1 wounds, and it will come up to 9.7 wounds uh, across the targets if we add the Warp Insect Hive. And the Lord of Contagion plus Explosive Pathogen would be doing 6.4 wounds on the base point and up to 8.5 wounds uh, with the Warp Insect Hive. And then the other, let's say, good thing, the Plague Bringer is quite okay, but not as good quality, I think, as, as the Reaper of the Glorious Entropy. The Chaos Lord uh, would go from two wounds up to almost four wounds and the potential morale effect. The Vomitrix is also quite good uh, for the for another Foul Blight spawn. I think the Revolting Stench Bats are better, but uh, but if you take the Mortarion's Chosen Sons and you have another Foul Blight spawn, it could be quite good. Uh, the base damage of the Foul Blight spawn from three wounds goes up to six wounds with this uh, Relic. And then we have a lot of, let's say, quite okay uh, Relics. Uh, you, can, you can pause and, and read here. And then we have a few of them that I don't think are as as good. The Demon's Soul for the Noxious Blightbringer, I don't think it's so useful, especially as Noxious Blightbringer is not as useful as he was before. The Ferryman Scythe, I don't believe it's super useful because it's but we have a, the Reaper of Glorious Entropy, which is much better. Uh, so here you can see the Lord of Contagion upgraded with a Ferryman Scythe goes from 4.3 wounds up to 4.8 wounds. So nothing nothing super special here. And infected remains is a bit too limited, and 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 a lot of the others can still find uh, some some use or for some certain builds. So uh, let's go over to the warlord traits. Uh, so we have uh, six uh, six uh, warlord traits, but uh, that are not play company specific. We have the Re revolting resilience, which is uh, five plus feel no pain. So like our previous discussing resilience, very interesting. Uh, the living plague aura uh, says that enemies within three inches cannot be affected by aura abilities from their own army. So this is very disabling to the opponent, but we, it's only a three inch aura. It, of course, it could be um, it could be prolonged with uh, Fugari's helm relic. Then we have the Arch Contaminator Aura, uh, which was uh, most maybe the most popular uh, Warlord trait from, from the previous uh, Codex and the start of the ninth edition. Uh, this now has been nerfed, at least in shooting and also in melee. Uh, in general, it can only target core units. So core units within six inches of the, of the Warlord can reroll all wound rolls in melee with plague weapons. And uh, they can reroll ranged attacks with plague weapons targeting enemy that but that is within 12 inches. So we can no longer use it to boost, for example, the um, weapon shooting 20, uh, at a distant target. So the shooting is a bit nerfed, 
and it's only affecting uh, core units. So it's not, in my opinion, at least an auto-include as it once was. And then we have the hulking physique and the rotten constitution that have been updated uh, since since last uh, since last uh, codex. So the hulking physique gives one more wound for the warlord, which is okay. But the good thing is the unmodified wound rolls of one to three always fail against this model. So this is very good against heavy weapons fire, uh, making making the warlord almost like having a, a toughness eight. Or, or better, that only four pluses uh, could potentially wound him. So this should prolong the, the durability of the Warlord versus heavy weapons fire. The Rotten Constitution gives one more toughness to our Warlord and uh, then attacks with AP-1 and AP-2 against this Warlord are treated as AP-0. And this is very good for smaller weapons fire or let's say the Thunder Hammers or whatever that has AP-2 combined with a two plus save of the warlord so our lords like the lord of contagion or lord of ireland's <clears throat> chaos lord they they naturally have a two plus save if we add the rotten constitution then we will be saving for all these weapons we will be saving on a two plus so only very few uh, damage uh, will go through from this uh, from these lighter weapons but of course uh, he high heating heavy heating weapons with high ap uh, we will not be able to um, ignore, but we will still be saving with our inval saves. Uh, and then the foul effluence uh, is an aura. The enemy within six inch of the warlord at the end of the death card movement. Uh, you roll a d6 on a four plus. Uh, you give this unit a mortal uh, one mortal wound. And then, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, Mortarion uh, will has. Uh, if we have Mortarion, he already has a lot of these uh, Warlord traits, so we cannot give in to someone else. So he already starts with Revolting Resilience, Living Plague, and Arch Contaminator. And additionally, he can take one choice of, of trade from the Plague Companies before the battle starts. But this, if we have Mortarion, this plays a limitation to what type of Warlord traits we have available for our other characters. But let's look at this... Uh, the Warlord traits from the Plague Companies. Uh, so the Plague Company Warlord traits, the specific Warlord traits are actually contagions. Um, so all of them give the Warlord a special contagion that can um, put, when, when the enemies are within this contagion, it either gives them some disability or it, it improves uh, the, uh, our, the, the units from the same Plague Company attacking the units under this contagion. So if we start with the Harbingers, uh, the Shamble Rot Contagion uh, says that non-vehicle enemy units within Contagion range at the start of opponent's movement phase, they get one mortal wound on a 4+. Uh, on, a, on a 6, they get T3 mortal wounds instead of the 1. And characters are minus 1 to this roll. Uh, so this can give a bit... So Harbingers uh, is a bit more oriented to give mortal wounds. And... Uh, if we take Typhus in the Harbinger's department uh, a detachment and he's our Warlord, he must have the, the Shamble, Shamble Rot Warlord trait. Um, so the Inexorable, they have the Ferric Blight Contagion. When enemies are within Contagion range of the Warlord uh, and they are being attacked by Inexorable units, they then we improve the AP by one. So this is quite helpful for a lot of units not, not needing to be core to get the benefit of this uh, increased AP. And then we have maybe one of the best ones, Mortarion's Anvil, the Gloaming Bloat. Enemy units within Contagion range cannot overwatch, they cannot set to defend, and they cannot use any rerolls for the hit and wound rolls. So this can be really good against enemies that rely on, on buffs uh, to rerolls and yeah. To, to add damage, so this can we with this one we can prevent them from from using this against us. The wretched they have the eater plague contagion and um, enemies within contagion range of the warlord are attacked by a wretched unit, an unmodified six to hit automatically wounds. Uh, this uh, I will also show is not as strong as for example giving them AP increase the AP by one, um, and then. Poxmongers, they have the Sangus Flux. Enemy units with Contagion range have minus one leadership and have minus one to combat attrition test. 
but I don't think it's not as strong to modify opponents' morale as there are a lot of armies have ways to bypass the morale test or avoid them, or there is always the stratagem to use. Maybe it could be interesting to see if I can make some list uh, focused uh, towards morale and combat attrition, but I think some of the others are, are better than, than, than this one. And then we have the ferryman, the drone in contagion, enemy within contagion range at start of movement phase, halves uh, his movement characteristic for the rest of the turn. Um, so this uh, can be uh, quite debilitating for some armies, but some can advance and they have some other rules maybe they can do. And basically, if we have a mirror match, uh, this is one of the things that our Death Guard inexorable advance can, um, <laughs> can, can ignore, let's say, because it says movement characteristic and not just movement. And finally, the Mortarion's Chosen Sons, they have Nurgle's Fruit, enemy within Contagion range cannot benefit from cover, and I think, all in all, this is not as good as, for example, the Inexorable Advance, uh, yeah, Inexorable Unit uh, improving AP by one, so I think this is, yeah, not, not one of the best, let's say. So, uh, summarizing the Warlord traits, I've tried to categorize them from what they can do, so we have Revolting Resilience, Rotten Constitution, and Hulking Physique, uh, Warlord Traits. They are all uh, improving the durability of the Warlord or the character that has this trait. So the one gives the 5 plus Feel No Pain, the other one gives uh, more toughness for the Warlord and uh, the ignoring the AP of low AP attacks. And um, the Hulking Physique gives one more wound to the Warlord and the Warlord can only be wounded on 4 plus. Uh, all in all, I think best overall durability boost for the character, uh, if we don't already have Mortarion in our list, is the Revolting Resilience. It gives 50% more, we can receive 50% more attacks in general against uh, all attacks uh, taken by the Warlord because we have also this 5 plus uh, Feel No Pain. And uh, so for any weapon, the character would be able to take 50% more shots or attacks and it additionally also provides protection from mortal wounds because typically our rules are um, uh, we they are not we don't have any protection from mortal wounds except from this uh, revolting resilience. But of course, if we have Mortarion, Mortarion has taken this, and then we cannot select uh, this. Then it would be better to choose one of the other two. Uh, then we have Rotten Constitution. This is, as I said, good for lords with two plus save um, and. Light weapons fire uh, will be helpful with the Rotten Constitution uh, or the Demon Prince. So if we give him also the separating plate, he would have two plus save for this. Uh, but the, the, the Rotten Constitution is not super good help versus heavy weapons that have good AP. But uh, for example, a Demon Prince can take, without the separating plate, he can take 60% more attacks from light arms fire. Um, ignoring the AP and saving, and the Lord of Contagion or Lord of Violence can take 100% more light arms fire attacks, so they can take double the number of bolter shots, for example. The Hulking Physique is good for characters facing often heavy weapon fire, uh, not, no big help for weapons with strength 5 or lower for the, our Lords, and strength 6 or lower for the Demon Prince, because then they, was, they would only be wounding on 4+, plus anyway. Uh, so Demon Prince and Lords, they they would be benefiting. They could be taking 50 to 60 percent more attacks from heavy weapon shots. So, for example, in this example, if they would if they normally would take let's say 10 melter shots, they would be able to take 15 melter shots uh, with the uh, hulking physique. But there is no help for light arms fire, and those two they don't help so much from mortal wounds. And then, so those were the ones that were buffing the the durability. Now we come to the three that are auras, uh, the living plague, um, where enemies units cannot receive benefits from their own army auras. This can be very interesting, but it's only a three inch aura. Could be combined with Fugaris Helm Relic to at least have a six inch aura, and then maybe some fast unit to be applying this together with some interesting contagion uh, for with a minus one toughness contagion at least. The Arch Contaminator, um, is uh, 
it's not, currently I think it's best to, it's best use is to buff melee units with plague weapons that do not have very high strength. For example, plague marines or blight lords. I mean the death shroud terminators. For example, they have strength eight weapons. They wound with a minus one toughness contagion. Our melee units uh, now are wounding quite well. We already have reroll once to wound, so rerolling everything to wound doesn't really help if we have strength eight weapons. But it could help, for example, plague knives or or flails, strength five, and so on. It we would get yeah more benefit on, on those. And yeah, uh, so but some for example, if I take the ten man plague marine full melee squad. Um, on average, over the 31 targets I'm used to simulating, this squad will be doing 18 wounds. So all, all the all the marines here they have the special weapons like flails, two flails, two cleavers, two maces, two axes, and one double knife, and the and the power fist for the champion. Uh, with a, if an arch contaminator was close by, they would be doing 20 wounds. So it's let's say 10% more wounds. Previously, yeah. So so there, of course, Ansh Contaminator can help, but it's not like an auto include, in my opinion, as it was before. The Foul Effluence Aura uh, could be somewhat useful on a fast character like a Demon Prince with wings, uh, trying to give uh, enemies uh, mortal wounds, but it's only one mortal wound per unit on a 4 plus. Um, but it, of course, you can target several units if you can fly in close with this, but I don't think it's one of the let's say, the best uh, warlord traits. And then we come to the contagions. I think uh, the gloaming bloat is, uh, is is one of the best ones, and this can be a really good choice for Mortarion to shut down enemy rerolls uh, if we have Mortarion or uh, some other warlord um, that can take this trait. Could be, could be quite interesting uh, to shut down Overwatch, for example, versus Tau and uh, uh, yeah, deny the enemy re-rolling hits and, and wound rolls. And then, um, but we have to, have to come close, of course, to, to use it, and Mortarion with a nine inch range uh, of the Contagion will be helpful. Uh, the inexorable Ferric Blight, I think, is, is one of the better ones, maybe the best, in my opinion, uh, apart from Gloaming Bloat. Uh, this uh, could be good for massed Bolter shots, Plague Knives, Volkite shots, you know, any anything with a with not a very high AP would benefit, uh, and it doesn't need to be a core unit to benefit. So, for example, for our plague verse scrollers, mortar would benefit. Uh, so, in this example, con a contemptor dreadnought with twin volkites would be doing six wounds on average, and it will increase to 7.5 wounds on average with if if only we had the minus one AP added. And 10 Plague Marines with two Blight Launchers will be doing four wounds, up to 4.8 wounds uh, across the targets. And then the Ferryman, the Droning, can be good versus certain opponents to slow them down. Uh, problem is sometimes is that the opponents can advance out of a bubble. If we tag enemies in melee and they and they when they fall back, they fall back slowly and they cannot advance. So that's that could be quite good in, in really blocking them down. Um, the Eater Plague is not as good on the Ferric Blight. We typically have good wound rolls in any case with Plague Weapons and rerolls, and it only affects one-sixth of the attacks. So, for example, in the same example here, 10 Plague Marines with two Blight Launchers, they will be doing the base four wounds, but then it will only increase to 4.3 wounds with uh, uh, Eater Plague uh, in effect, but to 4.8 wounds with uh, Ferric Blight in effect. And then the Harbingers, the, the, the Poxmongers and the Mortarian Chosen Sons, in my opinion, are, let's say, the least interesting uh, Warlord traits. So overall summary and ideas, uh, and some, my opinion, we have access to very good relics to do a lot of good job. We can, uh, there are some good ones to for the range damage buff. Taliman's Tollkeeper uh, stands out. Nice exploding sixes for Volkites, Blight Launchers, Plasmas, etc. Um, to achieve melee superiority, the Foul Blight spawns Revolting Vats. Probably an auto include if you want to go up uh, versus melee oriented opponents. And we have good melee units that can strike first and, and take out enemy or thin out the enemy before they can damage us. And we have good relics 
to make the characters and champions beat sticks. The warp insect hive stands out, very good for any character, best for demon prince, a lot of contagion, the reaper of glorious entropy for the lord of contagion or the death Shroud champion. Plague bringer is also an okay choice for chaos lord and we can increase auras with Fugari's helm and we have other relics to do also some, some other things. The warlord traits will depend a lot uh, first of all if you have Mortarion in your list or not because Mortarion, adding Mortarion you, you cannot, he, he takes four of them and then you have to select from some of the others. Here we have durability, uh, increased warlord traits, the revolting resilience is always helpful uh, for all kind of weapons and mortal wounds. Apart from that rotten constitution is good when paired with a 2 plus armor save and helps versus mostly lighter fire. Hulking physique can help versus heavy weapons, uh, but I would my first choice would be revolting resilience, then rotten constitution, and then hulking physique for this to achieve this. And then damage buffs. The arch contaminator can do well in buffing melee, but it's not as strong and versatile as it used to be. Especially if we take Mortarion, we cannot give this to anybody else. Uh, the, and then the ferric blight contagion for plus one AP uh, stands out as a good damage increaser. And then we have certain a lot of contagions that can disable uh, opponents or putting them in disadvantages. The gloaming bloat contagion giving no rerolls is really good. The living living plague plus Fugari's helm if we can probably to to avoid enemies benefiting from their own auras could be strong. But again if, Mort if we have Mortarion he has it and then we cannot give it to somebody else. And the Droning Contagion half movement characteristic could also be helpful. And there are also traits and relics that can give more mortal wounds. Uh, we have the Shamble Rod Contagion, the Foul Influence, but not as strong, in my opinion, as other alternatives. Maybe if we can try to make a specific list uh, centered ar around mortal wounds. I've been toying around with an idea for Harbingers, but I'm not fully done yet with, with the Harbingers mortal wound related list. So uh, finishing and coming up with the final thoughts, we have a variety of relics and warlord traits in the codex to choose from. We have Plague Company specific warlord traits as contagions for added versatility and flavor to our army lists. We can give a significant portion of our characters traits and relics for command points before the battle. And the number we can give is depending on battle size. And now we also have the possibility to give certain relics to bubonic starter champions, uh, adding even more, let's say, customization of our army lists. A fair amount of relics and traits contagions are very good in my opinion, and always should be worth considering. And for me, those are Tollkeeper, the Revolting Vats, the Warp Insect Hive, the Reaper of Glorious Entropy, and then. From the traits, it's revolting resilience and rotten constitutions, the gloaming bloat and the ferric blight. I think those uh, always, I think those for me strike out as, as are maybe the strongest we have. Uh, most other relics and traits contagions can also be useful depending on your list and preference and play style. And I mean, you can also go with a wretched and make a strong play caster. Yeah, the, the, it's not like the others are are bad but maybe they are more uh, you need to maybe more fine-tune your list while some of these are will always be uh, strong and few of our relics and, and traits are quite lackluster and uh, you can see in the tables which ones i mean uh, so this uh, concludes the video uh, what are your favorite relics and traits uh, how, what has your experience been from from the battle uh, on the tabletops um, if you like this video, please press like and subscribe to the channel where we'll be posting uh, more uh, Death Card Tactics videos uh, as we go along. Um, leave some comments uh, below and uh, if you want to, to uh, support uh, the channel uh, and more, uh, please visit my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com General Yanis. Uh, supporting uh, with a small monthly uh, contribution to uh, helping out uh, my work and uh, getting access to some of these library and results and some lazy sheets and ex a bit extra material there uh, and join the discussion about the roadmap and the next videos. 
Uh, and with these uh, words, uh, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.